Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hopefully your week's going on pretty well. Uh, kind of a short week for me with work because I got Friday through Monday off. I'm going to do a little bit of something different with the videos this week. Um, I'm going to go through how I prep my stuff for a show because I get so many questions asking me about what do I do for my show. Like, what, what all do I bring? Stuff like that there. So I'm going to hit a lot of this stuff in this video. So, like, this is what I'm doing today. And then I'll do a video on Friday that I'll post uh, before overtime for you guys to see the final piece of it all. Because I do it in two stages. I start getting all my stuff packed up now, minus, you know, the pricing of the cards, of course, because comps could change between now and Friday. All right. Let me grab my little thing here so I can make sure I check everything off. So the first thing that I do is I make sure I have a tablecloth that I purchased about oh maybe three years ago. It has the extreme card breaks logo on it and stuff. Because a lot of times when you go into a card show, you're gonna get like some of these crappy beat up tables and stuff. It just doesn't look good. On top of it, I have um, wooden display cases, so I'm trying to prevent any kind of nicking, scratching, stuff like that onto it. So I would suggest if you you could go out and just buy ones without the logo on. I think, like I said, I think I spent like, oh, maybe it was shipping. It might have been $250. I'd have to go back and look. It's been a while. I know it was a little over $200, but definitely under three. The guy was great. I gave him my logo. He fixed it up the way I wanted to and stuff, so it was pretty pretty good experience. But I would suggest getting some type of tablecloth to put down, whether you have a brand or a logo to put on it. It just makes it look a little bit more professional because anytime I go sit up somewhere, I am i know it's a little bit because I was in the Army for 20 years, but I always want it to set up to look good. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but I want to be able to, you know, just make it look, I don't want to use the word classy, but I don't still want my cards laid on a table type deal. All right. So the tablecloth's the first thing. And then what I also do with my cloth, tablecloth, usually once a year, I'll take it down and get dry cleaned. And just because, you know, fold and unfold and all these million times gets wrinkly and stuff like that there. So somewhere, I think it's due this summer. I think it's summertime. I got to look at this sheet. Yes, I actually do have a little uh, index card here. that says when I dry cleaned it last. All right, moving on number two. We already talked about the tablecloth. Let's talk display cases. I would suggest to get display cases, whether you buy the metal ones or whatever. I know the metal ones are like starting to become very expensive. The aluminum ones that are hard to find and stuff. I've used the same company for my display cases since 2004 or five, somewhere around there early. And I'm going to pull it up here so you guys can see. Where are you hiding this one? It's called Penzoni Display Company. Now, if you go over on the side here, they got all kinds of display cases. Go to the middle here, trade show display cases, which I'm in. And you can see they're around 100 bucks. I'm going to tell you now, I've never had an issue with them. I've gone through four display cases in 15 plus years with them. Um, I would advise do not get the black. They nick very easily. <laughs> and you're going to have to do a lot of touch-up paint with it. But, I mean, you can get out all different sizes. You can get the stand-up ones where you put the top loaders in, yada, yada, yada. They ship quick. No joke, you could get, like, you could order it the way you want to. So $100 might turn to, like, 130 if you want, like, felt into it and all this other stuff. And you can get the um, side rails. They're, like acrylic or plexiglass whatever you want to call it and they're cut for it and I'm, this is no joke i thought they forgot to send them to me he's like oh no no we don't place them inside the display cases anymore it shows how long ago i bought from them he says between the two boxes and i'm like i found them i feel like an idiot they were going to overnight them to me and i was talking this showcase came like a wednesday and i had to show on a thursday so real good company to work with they're um if you go to the website, you see down here where it says message us. Try, whoever's talking to you on there, I know it's a girl. I think her name was Kristen or Kirsten. I might be completely off. But um, she answers the phone, too. Very, very easy to work with. They make sure everything's good. Shipping address, all that stuff. 
I would highly recommend these guys if you don't want to go metal. All right, let me pull that down. Speaking about display cases, when you go set up, you want to make sure your display cases are clean. Right there. Windex comes with me and a roll of paper towels. I'm going to show you guys paper towels. On top of it, I have a lint brush when I'm roller ones because I have a lint padding on the bottom. And yes, stuff gets in it and I roll it over to get up anything in there. Clean off the plexiglass the best you can on too because that stuff there is going to scratch up. Um, but clean up your display cases once you get there. You know, you don't want to be that guy that just has dirty display cases. People start looking at that, you know, people will judge you on that. I mean, it's just the way it is. It's the nature of everybody out there. But at least do a wipe down so you don't have any fingerprints and stuff on to it. And the other trick I've learned to do is I keep my display cases like they're not the whole width of the table. I probably got about four inches. I back them the whole way to the back edge closer to me so people aren't leaning on my cases when they come up here. That's a big thing people do. They don't even know they're doing it. So, because I don't want anybody leaning on it. The next thing you know, the plexiglass pops and I got to order another display case. Just painful. But I would clean that stuff up. Um, this will go partly into a second video, but what I do want when I'm pricing my stuff out and I just get these here. I buy them off of Amazon, my business account. That you can peel these on and off your stuff very easily, but I replace the bags that my cards are in, whether it's a PSA bag or a one touch bag, you know, because the stuff when I have them in my case, I could be moving them back and forth a lot and they may look a little cruddy. So if they look bad, you know, just replace them. They're cheap, they're very cheap. I bring extras with me all the time to the shows because I might miss something. So, like, all this stuff goes with me. There's the Beckett's. Regular team bags for top loaders. You can see some of them are out because I've been playing around. I use these ones here for the one touches. Then I have the PSA ones and all that stuff. I'm just going to move stuff off as I talk. But always try to clean your stuff up and make it look presentable. Um, it's just my big thing. That's what I do. All right. We hit the price tag. Price tag your stuff out. I do it the night before or day before the show. Of course, comps can still go before that. You know, everybody out there is going to expect that they're, they do not want to pay eBay prices. So what I do is I comp my stuff based off of eBay pricing. Even though there's other platforms that I'll look at like 130 point, I have them both go in the same time frame. And... You know, if there's that, say a card's been selling at like 250 consistently, then all of a sudden the last comp's at 200. I look at that comp because I know people are going to come and try to get that card for 200. It could be a bad listing, let off the wrong time, guy had, you know, low feedback or has negative on to it, all kind of reasons. So when somebody comes, you could sit there and be like, oh, yeah, I know about that. You know, but my rule of thumb is this eBay charges 13%, right? In the state that I live in, Kentucky, it's a 6% sales tax, which I have to pay if I'm not charging you. So if I take $200 and I say 7% off, say is 186, I'll say 185 and I won't budge off that price because you're getting it lower and I have to cover the 6% sales tax at the end of the year. So a lot of people get that. If you're upfront and honest about it, but I'll go in more of that when I'm pricing stuff, uh, showing you guys on to that. But just never expect to get an eBay full pricing unless you have something low pops, low serial numbered, super desirable. Because I can tell you now, those first people coming in are looking to get deals. But somebody along the way, if you have a hot card nobody else has or people sell theirs cheap, somebody will pay that price for it if it's hot because they know the card's going up. But just know your cards real well and your pricing. All right, next thing. I make sure I have business cards and my licenses, just in case I'm ever asked. But you want to have something. It, it doesn't have to be a business card. If it has something that has your website, your Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Twitch, whatever it may be, where people could find you at. Because that person that day may not have money for it 
but we'll just use this as a perfect time frame. Tax refunds are coming in. He might say, hey, you got a way I can get in contact with you? Because I might get this in two weeks. I got some money coming in. We all know it's tax return. Like, yeah, here you go. Here's my Instagram, blah, 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 whatever it may be. Or pull out your phones. You know, switch it right there. You follow him. He follows you. Write down his stuff, whatever it may be. Get in contact with him. The other thing I like doing is I have signs. These acrylic signs cost me, I think it was three of them for like 10 bucks. So if I got box prices, I'll just flip them down flex. I'm not going to move the camera. All my box prices are written on here. Nobody has to ask me a question onto it. They're all there. The boxes are there. And then what I did with the other one, I have a blank one too still, is scan it with a QR code. Takes you right to the YouTube channel. You know, it just stuff like that there, you know, makes it'll set you apart from a lot of dealers. And people will, you know, especially if you're trying to build an Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, whatever it may be, it'll help you out. It will. I probably get about five to ten people per card show that will scan that and follow me on YouTube. So, I mean, if you're looking for ways to do that stuff, that's just an idea. That's just stuff that I do. All right. This goes into, so we're starting to get into some of the crazy stuff now that I bring. No, I do not bring Dream Crusher. Very seldom, unless somebody asks me why I'm not bring, how I will bring Dream Crusher with me. I do bring this. Has the light and all that on to it. Now, mostly the reason why I use this is because, say I have a card, and we'll just use this Pokemon. I'm having a hard time trying to see the numbering. I'll pull it up like that so I can read it. I'm like, dude, hold on, let me get my magnifier. I can't read it. I make it known, and I'm looking to magnify it because I can't see the bottom, like the year or whatever. Now, some people will be like, oh, this will gem mint 10. I'll be like, dude, right there, whiting on the corner. That's not a gem mint 10. And I said, you can't sell this as a gem mint 10. If it was a gem mint 10, you'd have paid for it. You know, it's just little things like that there. But I bring that so I could read the dates on the back of cards because I try to remember what year was this and that. And, you know, you're trying to find a comp and all that stuff. You want to go quick. You don't want to have somebody sitting there while you're trying to look something up for 10 minutes. It's just really, really uncomfortable. The other thing I'll bring, because I like showing this, is my centering tool. And this is the numbers and stuff onto it, because a lot of people have questions onto their stuff. And, you know, you can line this up with a card, show them, hey, it's our OC, you know. And this is my backup one right here. I got two of them. But I do bring these with me. I probably might use them twice a year at shows. So it's not something real big that I use heavily, but I bring them with me because I never know when I'm going to need it. Next thing I bring. Believe it or not, you got to bring, I bring screwdrivers. Why? I can't tell you how many people come to shows with stuff and screw downs. It, you will, it's crazy. It's a lot. And I'm not talking about the ones that are built for like the four booklet thing and stuff like that. They still come to shows because they know baseball cards are worth something. They bring these cards and screw downs and ask how much you want for them. You know, you got to pay attention to the screw downs because if they didn't have the little indention that you place your card in, they could have smashed the card. And when you do that, you're not going to get a grade. They're going to call it altered. So... I do bring this, that way I can take the card out, look at it, and stuff like that. Yes, I do ask in advance if I could do it. I do bring rubber gloves as well with me um, to touch people's cards. Because, especially I get into older stuff. Oops, drop part of my stuff. But um, I don't want to get any oils onto their cards. That's just me. Again, it just shows respect, um, you know, handling somebody else's cards too. The next thing I will bring with me is extra supplies, such as top loaders, one touches, sleeves. Uh, basically, what I do is I bring one size of everything, then one pack of regular sleeves, pack of thick sleeves. I bring my scissors in case I need to slice the side down for a thick card. But then I'll bring, you know, maybe about 10 one touches with me. Reason being, I might go out there and go through somebody's box and find stuff, you know, that I want to put for sale right there. And their cases are scratched up, whatever it may be. So I just make sure I have the stuff with me. Um, 
I would probably say 80% of the shows I'm already replacing uh, top loaders, one touches, whatever may be there. So just a little food for the thought on that one. All right. Next piece. Bring change. Ones, fives, and tens. Especially if you're going to have like dollar bin boxes and stuff. Because I can't tell you how many people will come there and they don't have change. And then, you know, you might not have the ones left and it's like $17. Like, oh, just give me 15 But that $2 added up, you know, 10 times, that's 20 bucks. A lot of times, you know, it is what it is. Or some people will try just to make it to a round number. I This is my thing. I bring about 20 to 30 ones with me. If I use those up, I just tell people, hey, they already hit me up on my ones, man. And I'll usually ask, you know, somebody next to me that I know, hey, you got five ones or five bucks or whatever it may be, stuff like that. So try to try to bring some change with you just so you have it there. And I'm telling you, it goes quick a lot of times, too, especially when a guy wants like three one dollar cards and they hand you a 20. You're like, dang, I just lost a 10 to five and two ones. <laughs> All right. Last thing I tell you, I bring with me, I bring my own food, bring myself drinks, bring my own uh, spitter bottle, too. But, um, just, you know, last thing I got to take care of myself cause I'll be talking a lot. I bring about three, four bottles of water and normally I just pack a sandwich, you know, maybe some like cheese and crackers, peanut butter and crackers, just something to hold me over because during those times, I mean, you don't want to be that guy that has pizza delivered and you have grease all over your hands and you're touching your cards, their cards and all that stuff or a hamburger from like Wendy's that's dripping out grease. It's just me. I mean, I got it. it happens. But again, I'm not sitting at the national trying to do this stuff to where I'm mooching off of GTS's uh, free food they got there and stuff like that. But that's pretty much my stuff there. I double check this thing all the time. I, I have I literally built myself a little check the block thing to make sure I have all this stuff each time I go. But. I, like I said, I get asked a lot of questions. What all do I bring? How do I set up and all that? That's my, what I do to check, start it off. I mean, that stuff there is all checked right now, going down the whole line, minus food and drink and change. I mean, I got some, but I need to pick up a little bit more before I go. But other than that, I mean, the next piece to my puzzle, once all that stuff's in place, is me doing, a you know, the Friday night or Friday day uh Pricing everything out, knowing where the comps are at, always trying to see where that one low comp is because somebody is always going to throw that low comp at you no matter what. But like I said, don't ever expect to get eBay prices unless you're holding like a one 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 out of five, something like that there because normally you're just not going to get it. I mean, you can sit there and argue eBay pricing versus sales tax to the person, but at the end, if it's something that's common and other people have there, you know, just be flat out like I am with them. I'm like, hey, eBay's 13%. Sales tax is state six. I can do 7% off. Off of that if you're interested. And like I tell them, if you want to grab a stack of cards, you know, out of my display case, I'll work with you a little bit more. But that's just where you got to really know how much you're into cards for and everything like that too. Cause you don't want to take losses all the time. You, you want to try to make some money, but at the same time frame, you want to also build those relationships out there with people. And I mean, just by your proper setup and stuff, you'll attract people come talk to you. I mean, if you're like King cardboard on, I just made a name up on instagram have something showing that that way people know oh man that's king cardboard on there or whatever it, it, it just it'll help promote yourself especially if it's a something that you're looking more from a hobby to being like i don't want to use the word flipper but a dealer onto it you got to push your name out there you have to along the whole lines all right, guys, if you got any questions, hit me up down below. If you got any other suggestions, put them down in the comments section. Other than that, I'll be back Friday with another video on this stuff. Um, hopefully, I tried to give everything that people would want to hear on this. I'm not too sure. Oh, I mean, I bring pens, too. I forgot about pens, but they're already in my bag. And then, of course, like my camera and stuff like that. But that's for filming and stuff. That's not like I know everybody goes out there and does that stuff. But all right, guys, take care. 
Have a good one. Catch you all next video.